Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 48th week of weeklypokerhand.com. We're going to be going over a hand from, I believe, a $100 buy-in online tournament. Um, as you see, we are kind of deep stacked. So we'll go ahead and just check this hand out and see what happens. Here a guy raises to 1,000 from early position. I talked about a little bit of this in the last episode, where when a guy makes it, you know, two and a half big blinds, it's probably just a standard raise with a decently wide range. But again, this guy is raising from early position, so... His range certainly could be strong. We don't have to just automatically discount all sorts of strong hands because he makes it two and a half big blinds. Um, I think this could could be a pretty standardish range of you know ace king ace queen ace jack, kings queen aces, you know a bunch of pairs, maybe some suited connectors stuff like that. So against that range, I should probably take a flop here with ace jack suited. Although I do have to be careful post flop, assuming it doesn't come wonderful for me. And this is one of those examples of a spot where you do have to be very careful with ace jack because we do lose to every big ace here which certainly is in this opponent's range. And with hands like kings, queens, and jacks, if my opponent does have those, he's probably not going to put in a ton of money anyways. And if he does have something like pocket tens, uh, he has me crushed as well. So this is one of the spots where we have huge reverse implied odds, and we do have to be very careful to not go broke post-flop. So here I check. He makes a standard continuation bet, which I do think he'll do with the vast majority of his range. So I think folding's out of the question at this point. Um, some players like to raise here, but I think raising will only make your opponent continue whenever we are beat, which is, of course, a disaster. And whenever you do play in that style, it's almost such that you're going to win a lot of small pots. Whenever your opponent actually does have you beat, you're just going to be crushed and probably sent packing. So right here, I think calling is really the only play. You do have to worry about some draws. What this amounts to, though, is this is really just a dicey spot because we have to have to worry about a lot of draws, so there are very few good turn cards. And my opponent could already have me crushed, so... It's not, not a good spot we're, we're heading into. Um, you have to ask, could we just fold the flop? And I actually don't think that would be absurd. But I think a better play is to call the flop, and then if he bets again on the turn, consider getting out of the way. So I check the turn. He bets 3,400, which looks to me like he's trying to set up the river to make a decent-sized shove. So if I was playing this hand today, I think I would just fold right here. And I know that may sound a little bit tight, but I really think a lot of guys are not going to continue betting here with something like jacks or, you know, nines. Maybe he'd bet with nines as a bluff, but I think that's kind of optimistic. So when this guy bets again here, I really do think he's just setting us up for a river shove, and if that's the case, I can't really stand the heat because I lose to ace-king, ace-queen, ace-ten, aces, tens, random pocket sevens if he happens to have that, or pocket twos, which is kind of unlikely. But I do lose to a ton of stuff here, and even if he does have one of the draws, like say he has queen-jack of hearts, he still has a boatload of equity. So either way, I think I just have to fold here. But this was stubborn, stubborn J card shark, and he elects to call. Unfortunately, we get a brick on the river. And uh, if this was any other card that you know kind of completed something, like say it was a heart, and I check any jams, I'm just going to fold for sure, because then I really can't beat anything. But here, I still can beat the draws. His bet sizing is interesting. He, he basically put bets enough to put me all in, but not much more than that. And that's kind of an interesting thing. You know, a lot of guys will jam all in in spots like this whenever they want you to fold, and they'll bet smaller, like, you know, 7,400, whenever they want you to call. I think that if you can figure out when a guy is doing that, you can make really, really huge folds or really huge calls, depending on the situation. But uh, I don't know anything about this guy. In general, though, you will see the guys make the smallest bet possible whenever they want to get called. They want to make their bet look as unobtrusive as possible. And... They, a lot of people think the 7400 is is that bet size here. So if I think he's trying to get called, uh, what should I do? I, I should obviously fold. So now my question is, would he bet here with ace-king or ace-queen for value? And I think it's close, but I, I do think he would. He, I mean, in his situation, the only hands he really loses to is ace-10 and pocket-10s and pocket-2s. And if you just lose like such a tiny, tiny range, you really should be value betting. So if he does have ace-king or ace-queen here, I think he should value bet. And I, I like the line he took. Um, on the turn, you have to wonder if he planned on folding. But whenever he bets this big on the turn, I think he probably would call off, given there are a ton of draws. And whenever you are betting with top pair, there's usually a spot, either on, usually on the flop or the turn, where you may be able to get a guy off of it. But I'm, I'm not really looking to turn a, a pretty strong made hand like ace-jack into a bluff. But if there was a spot to do it, I could check-shove here. But if he has ace-king or ace-queen, I mean, I, I'd be flabbergasted if he folded. So anyways, I'm on the river. He bet. And I elected to call, and I, I do not like this call. If I'm looking back, I think this is 
pretty much like a brain dead fold. I guess I lost my mind here. And I mean, I guess this just goes to show that everyone loses their mind from time to time. And I, I just think that if I if I'm ahead, it's only just a few combinations of hands, like the, just the, the straight flush heart combinations, like king queen, queen jack, jack, um, king queen, queen jack, and king jack of hearts. Which again, they're just not, they're only three combinations. And then possibly he could have nine eight of hearts. So maybe we're looking at four combinations of bluffs. And you have to think that, I mean, there are just a ton of combinations of ace-king alone. And then we have to worry about ace-queen. We have to worry about sets of tens, sets of twos, sets of sevens. And all that combined just makes this a pretty pretty easy fold. We do only need to win 27% of the time to break even. But in a tournament, you're going to want to win more than that because there is value in not going broke. Not as much as most people put on it, but there is value in not going broke. And... I'm, I'm just beat here every time, unless he has one of those few flush draw combinations. And if he decides to fire off three barrels with it, you know, so be it, good bluff. But I do call, and he does have the ace-king. And I, I think my opponent played this hand pretty well, actually. I mean, throughout the whole hand, he bet in a spot where I really can't have much. And he pretty much owned me. So that's that for this week. If you guys want to watch me play now, again, this hand is from a few years ago, I definitely suggest you check out floatthetern.com. It's my poker training site, and... I've learned to make folds since then. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, everyone makes mistakes in hands, and I, I think I definitely butchered this one. So whenever you do butcher your hand, don't don't let it drive you crazy. Just make sure you don't make the same mistake over and over again. And you'll find that a lot of players, the reason they never move up is because they make the same mistakes consistently. And if you are thinking about all the, all the errors you're making and trying to improve and not just looking at this hand and saying, oh, it's a cooler, you know, he had top pair, I had top pair, so I just have to lose here. You know, you'll end up improving and becoming a better player. And this is absolutely not a cooler by any means. I think that I had plenty of opportunities to get away from this hand and continue in the tournament. So that's that for this week. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.